Hey guys, I'm Phoenix and this is Nate and today we are going to uh, be home brewing some beer for the first time ever. So the whole process is going to be done. We're going to try to like take bits and pieces to show you guys and how it went and tell you how it went as well. And so let's go ahead and get started on it. Alright. Yay. First things first, we're going to boil 1.25, 1 and a quarter gallons of water. It tells us that any drinking water that tastes okay is going to work, but we've used distilled water from the store. So we're going to go ahead and pour that out. It's exciting to finally do this. Yeah. We should say that we have put this off at least four months? Nah, two and a half. Yeah, but I mean at least like five or six different times. Oh. It's been on our schedule forever and we, we haven't, uh, haven't followed through until today. Mm -hmm. So that's one gallon. I'm not sure if we should save this. And this is our quarter of a gallon. Turns out our pot is massive and we don't have to worry about boil over. Mm, never say never. <laughs> Alright, so while that is uh, heating up, um, so we need to get it to boil, right? Yep, we need to get it to boil first. Uh, these are definitely our steeping grains? Yep. Okay. So do you want to pour or do you want to hold the bag? I will pour the bag. We're going to hold the bag open. And just make sure that this is secure at the bottom. I guess you can't really do it like a trash bag. No. Right. What does it smell like? It smells like wood. Yeah. I was gonna say like when I used to have a horse, it smelled like the feet. Yeah. Okay. It's our feet. Mm -hmm. It's our weird feet. So this is going to get tied off at the end of that after the foils. Exactly. Oh, is this even going to be long enough to get into the water? Yeah. Tie it up as tight as you can there, and it can stretch. I mean, if we're tying it off on the edge of it. I know. It will. It will? Yeah. Okay. So Size of pot is important, people. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is if we have to, we can just make sure it's tied off at the top just to make sure the grains are not going to get out and then we'll find a way to rig the tip of it and the handle. Yeah, my concern is that double tie, every time we tie it, it's going to take up more of this. No, I get you. So. Do your best. Awesome. I'll leave that to you. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, I want to make it prettier. Prettier. I shouldn't be touchy though, I'm not getting a probe, but it's still has no problem. You're right. So bring a liquid to a boil after that. Crank it up and then start boiling. So it's gonna do the steeping thing for 10 minutes, and then it's going to boil for 45 minutes. So let's tell the camera. It's gonna steep for 10 minutes, and then it's gonna boil for 45 minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeast or not yeast? The dried hops. The grains. The grains. The grains. They they have steeped for ten minutes, and now we are getting ready to take them out and then uh, bring this to a boil for forty-five minutes. Yes, so, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the grains now. Oh, uh, I like. I twisted that on there so jacked up. But it's okay. It held, and that's what matters. It was like a puzzle. I forgot. About So, so we're first gonna move this here and make sure we get as much in there as we can. Look at it bounce. There we go. So go ahead throw that away for me. And I'm probably gonna wait till that's not quite so hot. That's fine. 
All right. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and bring this to a boil, and we're going to leave it there for 45 minutes. So we'll have to check back in then. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now we're waiting for this to boil so that we can add this gold malt extract syrup in and the first packet of pops. And then after that, we let it boil for 35 minutes, and then we add another packet of pops. Right. And we're doing the Chinook IPA, so our steps are going to be a little bit different than some of the other northern brewery uh, kits. What do you think? you think it's a boil now? I think so. That's cool. You want to you wanna make the call on this one? I'm making the call on it. Alright. Someone's impatient! No, I just don't want it to like cook too long and then we end up having a weird tasting beer. It's going to work. Second extract. Yeah. Clearly do these. That's okay though. We're learning. Yeah. Now remember, we have to put these in like one at a time because this is where it will probably boil over. That's what they say. Let's not test it. Let's not test it. Do you need the scissors? Are you going to taste it like I did in the video? Maybe. What does it taste like? Caramelized sugar. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's actually really good. Uh. It's like if honey and syrup and a tree had a baby. Now, if only the finished product tasted like this, because I actually don't like IPAs. But since, since oh, this was single. Turn down the heat so it doesn't. Do you want me to? No. I think they said something about it. No, if it starts to boil over? Turning down the heat for the uh, sake of not burning it in the bottom. I forget which type of Now, I remember, I remember you're right, I didn't say something about that. But I think this is my. It's actually working out lovely. So if you want, go ahead and open up one of those packets and just put them in one at a time while I'm doing this. Yeah, because apparently this needs to be stirred constantly so it doesn't boil over. Oh, they... Oh, that is, that is what makes the IPA. Ooh. That smells kind of gross, actually. Oh. I feel almost like I should put this in my hand. Go for it. Let's do it. All of it, do it. No, no. I don't want to have to be cleaning off. Now I see why they say it will caramelize your stovetop. I don't want to be cleaning off caramelized stuff. Oh, that that's fine. I think that's almost all of them. Check it out. Oh, there's, there's one more. It smells so it like smells it. delicious. It smells, smells like an IPA. Smell. You smell. Well, now there's nothing in there. Smells like an IPA. Oh, this one smells. Spice, pine characteristics, subtle grapefruit. It smells like pine to me. It smells like somebody is licking a pine tree. <laughs> All right, so we should go ahead and start the timer. Yeah. 35 minutes. Uh, syrup? I don't know, that syrup is damn good. I'm maybe putting in as much as I possibly can. Maybe I'll, I'll lick the gold malt extract. Bottle like a bowl of ice cream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's so tasty, that's like unexpectedly tasty. It's a very interesting taste. It's kind of like the when you first have beer and you think, I'm never going to like this, this is gross. And then you get addicted to beer. No, that tastes nothing like beer to me. That tastes like that tastes like that should be in candy. It's that unique flavor that beer has, where it's just like, why is it that you can't pin down the sweetness to it? Because it all tastes like liquid bread. That's what it tastes like to me. All right, that is a boil. All right. So 
So yeah, we'll be back in uh, 35 minutes. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, it's about 35 minutes, and now we are getting ready to add uh, one more. One more. Are there four? Yes, there is. So for now, we're going to be adding one, uh -huh. and in 10 more minutes, we're going to be adding two, stir, and then turn off the heat. Okay. So this particular brew is going to have us using a four total packets. The first packet went in previously. You saw that. The second one, hmm. the second delicious one, is being put in here now. Go ahead, and I'll keep stirring. And like I said, we are going to be adding two more packets come 10 more minutes from now. And just toss them all in. Just uh, so you have an idea of what this smells like, our entire apartment smells like tea right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's like I can tell how this is eventually going to turn into an IPA, but right now it just smells like tea. Kind of like an Earl Grey. So, do we want to start doing the water bath now? Do I do the timer now? Yeah, the timer for nine more minutes. And yeah, what we're going to do now is we're going to start filling up our sink with ice water so that way once we do cool this, turn off the heat here, and we add those other packets, we can start cooling this down afterwards. By the way, our kitchen is Maybe the smallest kitchen in existence of kitchens. I oh, only have two full ice trays. Look at that. That is sad. That is sad. Yep. All right. So let's hope this gets cool enough because we have like check this this glorious thing out. It's like half an ice cube tray and another half of an ice cube tray. And I think in the video they were actually using like what a tin, almost a ten pound bag of ice or like at least like. Five pound, half of a ten pound bag. Right? Yeah, they had a really deep sink, so they had what looked like two ten pound bags of ice in there. I just hope they haven't boiled off too much water at this point. That's the reason for the quarter of a gallon, half of a gallon, so that way you can actually retain at least a gallon of the overall water. Welcome back. Now we are going to stop the boiling. Right? Yes, we will. So now. Go ahead and turn this off, and we're going to go ahead and add these last two hops packets. Good. While it's hot, just throw it. In. Yeah, that's the same. Is that it? No. Okay, come on. I feel like every one, every little grain matters because there's like so few of them in these bags. I know. Now that was it, right? Stir this until it is completely dissolved, which is pretty easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then once that's done, we're going to move it into the ice bath, and then we're going to start sanitizing all of our equipment. I personally have a fear that when you take something off boiling or hot temperatures, that it's going to crush itself. Physics. Really? Yeah, you've never heard, you've never seen like whenever somebody takes the giant 55 gallon drum. I think it was Bill Nye that did it. Bill Nye the science guy. I know who Bill Nye mm -hmm. He took a 55 gallon drum that had been overheated and then he threw it into an ice kiddie pool and it just crumpled itself. Oh. As now I'm like, hmm, no, because they were using stainless steel in the video too, I believe. That is true. It looks like it's actually also boiled down quite a bit, but it should still contribute to a gallon. Oh. Alright, so you ready to do this? Uh, I am getting out of your way, so you can do it. I'm going to move these, and then I'll stick them back in. Once. Well, maybe I won't stick them back in because of this super hot. Alright, so we're going to let that cool. Now it remains covered. Yes. Not to be forgotten, because we don't want any more of that to escape. So, ideally it says 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, but we'll do our best. Yeah, we, we actually don't have a, a food thermometer to, to test this, so... Winging it! Alright, so cool the wort. Touch. So we're going to go ahead and start sanitizing the gear. Sanitize one gallon fermenting jug, airlock, screw cap, Auto siphon and hose. It says plus these. Two. 
Yeah, the outside of the packaging. Mm -hmm. yeah, apparently sanitizing is super important. Uh, you can see now the water is actually decreasing because we were able to get the siphon working. I hope that the rest of that did not get recorded because it was embarrassing. Anyway, we were able to get the air to stop going back up through the tube and right now we've got the sanitary liquid from inside of this siphoning down into this particular pot down here. Well, and we are going to have to stop siphoning pretty quick because uh, in a minute it's going to overflow. Okay. So I'm just, I will let you know I'm going to pull the plug on this when it needs to be pulled. So. I, if you remember right, we made it all the way to the top. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Yeah, it is. We did. We got it. Tip it. Tip it. Right. Okay. All right. So we did the things. We, yeah, had to use a special secret to cool the wort a little faster than usual. <laughs> so we filled our water with things that would cool it faster. That is it. That is all we need to know. All right, so the next step we're going to be taking care of is siphoning the cooled wort to the gallon jug. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Should I dump out this little bit of yeah, extra you can. sanitizer in here? No harm. You do not need to wipe the sanitizer out, by the way. It's perfectly fine to have it in here. System. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. It took us a little bit to get the siphon working, as you may have seen before. He's going to edit it out. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh, I think I have to hold this again. But yes, that's exactly it. So go ahead, if you can, hold that there. How does it feel on the inside? Cool enough. Hopefully. Oh, we'll honestly. So now. Okay, so I actually need to put this against the bottom of this to do it. Okay. I am going to put it right here. Let's start going, and as soon as we can just get a little bit of liquid in here, it should. Are you going to have to do the thing you did last time to get it to slide? holds it underwater is gently tilt the pot so it actually picks up everything that's not at the bottom because there's going to be some sediment at the bottom of this wart and that's not what you want. I will do my best to keep it as close as I can to you while I tilt. This still smells like tea but it's actually starting to smell like a beer but it still smells mostly like tea. Almost to the point where I can't take any more without it being sediment, in which case we'll have to deal with the very little amount of beer we ended up with. Hmm. I'm starting to. I guess, did we overboil it? Did we, we probably did overboil it, so we're gonna have some strong tasting beer, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Alright, so it stopped. And we don't want to pick up the rest of this, so... Okay, so whatever goes back in, it's fine then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can officially hold that up. Okay. And we'll let it kind of dribble back out, I suppose. So, clearly we have done something wrong, because we ended up with half a gallon of beer, uh, instead of a gallon, but uh, I'm pretty sure we did overboil it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure too. It's the only way we could have ended up with such little liquid in the end. Again, we are now just hoping this makes a super strong beer. And that's okay. And I don't know if we're going to have a... We'll have enough for a six pack, but not 12. Because this kit came with 12 oh, bottles. Yeah. I forgot about that. So we'll still get a six pack out of this. All right, do we do anything with this? Um, no. We don't remember. Yeah, just put it there. It's not super important anymore. Okay. So now, we have Oops. siphon that, make sure you aerate the wart, cover the fermenter with a sanitized screw cap, and gently rock back and forth for a few minutes. Yeah, and 
this thing is threaded deep. Yes, so it threads pretty deep, but also it's easy to accidentally cross thread it, so you gotta be careful of that. Yeah, because this top is plastic, so. Now I will go ahead and narrate. Like it's got a leak in the bottom of it. A leak? Either that or it's coming out the side. Yeah, it's coming out the side. That's what I mean about cross threading. So let's try this again. I fucked up. <laughs> it's okay. Next, we're going to go ahead and add the yeast and pour it into this jug. At, th at that point, we end up sealing this fermenter. And what that's going to involve is at the top of this particular screw cap, we are going to undo that and put in a cork, which is going to involve this three-way airlock. So the liquid that's going to sit inside that three-way airlock is actually going to be a seal. That liquid makes sure that no air enters, but can escape from inside here. Let's go ahead and get the yeast ready for me. Okay, just pour it right in, right? Pour it right in. Oh, this one did have an expiration date on it. And it was in September, so we're doing this just in time. Good deal. Look at them, they look like little bugs. Yeast is interesting. So what does it say? Um, hmm. Use the seal the fermenter. Either fill the sanitized airlock with approximately one tablespoon sanitizing solution or tap water. So we could probably just use this and put it in. So first we need this to point. Yeah. All it really means is, as okay, to show you guys, all it really means is inside this three-way airlock, you can see that there is a bell. The bell goes over the top of the tube here. As long as the liquid reaches over the top of that bell, you'll even see there is a fill line in here. You probably can't see it because it's fogged up, but that's where the liquid needs to be. So do you want to just dip it in the sanitizer solution instead of using this one? Okay. Put the airlock into the hole and screw cap. Uh, So that's it guys, then we gotta move this to uh, to a dark quiet spot uh, for it uh, needs to be at about 60-75 degrees and uh, we're hoping that this uh, this turns out alright. Alright guys, so we just finished making the uh, Northern Brewers uh, Chinook IPA. Uh, as you saw in the video, we uh, it definitely wasn't as smooth of a ride as it probably could have been. What did, how did you think it went? I think we did pretty well, but we honestly uh, looked and looked and watched a few videos and researched, and we kind of like were hesitant to do it until we finally took the plunge and did it, and decided to record this video at the same time. So we had enough fun with it, I think. Yeah. So one thing that we should uh, note is that uh, this was probably just a like an error in shipment. Is the the box that we got was supposed to have come with like a training DVD on how to actually like make make the uh, IPA, or not the IPA, but just brew the beer, uh, it did not, so we had to find a video online. Uh, and the video online was for uh, was for a different type of beer, so it wasn't like an exact, you know, step-to-step -step, uh, video that we actually got to watch uh, and follow through. But what did you think about the instructions? Like, how easy was it to follow? So the instructions are very easy to follow. I think that there are some nuances to it that you kind of have to get ready to take on, like the siphoning. I've never siphoned anything through a tube before like that, so it took me a bit of understanding real quick. And um, there is one part of it, like you saw, our, we ended up with half a gallon in the end, and we should have had a gallon. And that was because we ended up boiling it at too high of a temperature. Um, that could be a problem because of the pop that we had too. 
the pot may have just wouldn't boil if we didn't put it at a certain temperature. So maybe just find uh, find the right equipment first. Yeah, we're uh, we're probably going to do this again eventually, but we will have uh, definitely a thermometer, like a, a cooking thermometer, to be able to like test the temperature of things. Um, definitely, uh, definitely have more ice available on hand because, as you saw, we had one ice cube tray full of ice that we had to use, and then we resorted to putting our uh, icy. icy pops in uh, in the uh, ice bath to actually get it cool enough to um, to make the uh, the beer, but uh, I would say it was a, as far as messiness goes, it kind of is a little bit of a messy process. Uh, I've, I've, of course, we saw, a, or not actually saw horror stories, but heard horror stories of people having boil overs. We didn't have that. Uh, what we did have, though, was at the bottom of our pot, um, there was a little bit of like black caramelized the uh, malt. malt at the bottom, which I think in the video, that's when, like you were trying to say, that they... Yeah, so they took it off the heat long enough uh, to pour in the malt. They also failed to mention that it's really thick. In order to keep it pouring out, get as much malt in it as possible, I suggested we might warm it. That wasn't necessary for us because we were actually boiling it at such a high temperature. When I went to pour in the malt, it kind of just melted out of the jar. But they did remove it from the heat from the roaring boil to stop it from burning. We didn't do that. We just poured it in, stirred it as best we can. And there are black marks at the bottom of the pot, but it's nothing massively, you know, you know, terminal about the whole ish like boil. Yeah. It didn't cause any problems. Yeah, the, the pot will survive this ordeal. Yeah. Um, so he is actually excited to try this again and to actually make sure that we do it right and, and kind of perfect it. Where uh, I'm a little bit more apprehensive on it, but uh, but we will do it again. It wasn't. Uh, we probably won't record it when we do it again. Um, but it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't as daunting as it seemed at first. Uh, we had originally planned to have like a beer tasting party when all this was over, but yeah, that's not going to happen now. We got no. <laughs> we got like six beers out of this, and I'm I'm not uh, expecting them to like honestly taste too great. But yeah, you know, this is. We've never done it before, and uh, so hopefully if, if you're trying this for the first time, your experience t turns out a little bit more successful than ours has, but we just wanted to kind of show a uh, show first-time experience with us. So. Yeah, and let us know if you have any questions about it, we'll be happy to answer. Alright guys, it's uh, two weeks later and we are getting ready to bottle. So uh, at first we were kind of concerned because we didn't see uh, this thing bubbling, and it actually finished early. But I think that's because we have a uh, we have so little beer yeah. as you can as you can see. Now I'm not sure how well you can see this, but there's a bunch of little uh, like an orange kind of film, bubbly film on top, and that is actually some uh, yeast. yeast leftover uh, yeast. So that's uh, perfectly safe. We're gonna try to uh, siphon between. But uh, what we're going to do now is uh, sanitize our equipment, or not our equipment, but the bottles that we're going to use. We're probably only going to get about six bottles of beer out of this. Uh, sanitize our caps, and then we are going to get to bottling. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, so we're going to start by sanitizing the rest of the equipment that we're going to be using for today, which is going to be the bottle caps, the bottles themselves, this auto siphon, and its hose. And also we need to sanitize the actual bottle siphon itself. So the tip that they give you with these particular siphons is that when you go to fill the bottles, you'll press this at the bottom, the beer goes through automatically and fills up the bottle to the point where it reaches just about here. And whenever you get to that point, you stop by lifting it slightly. And once you lift it out, you'll have just enough headspace to completely bottle it up. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with sanitizing. This I've actually already uh, sanitized because it's actually quite difficult to work with, if I'm completely honest. And so I'm going to go ahead and do the hose part of it, which is not too difficult. With our package, they gave us enough solution to probably fill up 50 gallons worth of water sanitization solution. So not too difficult there. 
One thing they mention a lot as well is that even if you keep sanitized fluid inside the tubes, it's okay to ingest, don't worry about it, it's perfectly safe. Next time we homebrew, we're actually going to be using a five gallon homebrew kit instead, since that is what a lot of people mentioned. In fact, this is probably about five gallons itself. So, oh, I've already run out of room to put all my sanitization tools. Alright everyone, so we're going to start with siphoning the beer out of the jug into the bottles by starting the auto siphon itself. So in the instructions it says that we're supposed to be able to remove this airlock, fit this in there, and we're going to start collecting the actual beer in between the sediment at the top and bottom. So we're going to do that to the best of our abilities. So that's not going to fit. I'm telling you right now it's not going to fit. Bear with us while we attempt. So go ahead and you know, take that out. smell it. So as you can see it did not fit in there, that's why we're removing the cap. So hopefully none of our flying friends join us for this. Yeah, we have had a really bad nap problem lately. Hmm. It smells like beer. It does smell like beer. Alright, so you ready? I'm gonna be so you want to get down low. So do you want me to put it all the way? Yep, all the way to the bottom. And do you want me to push it in? Yep. That's slippery as hell. Okay. Alright. Yep, it's going. Good? Yeah, it's going. Alright, so now we just wait. Just start filling these bottles. Once you're sure that it's reached the point, you're just going to lift up a little bit and that'll stop the actual bottle siphon. Meanwhile, I'm going to try to make sure I don't pick up as much sediment as possible. Yeah, this is definitely a uh, two man job. Yeah, I would say. Man, woman. Woman, woman. It's like a trickle. Good. Nice and slow. Are you keeping an eye on like the level? Trying to see how yeah, much beer we're actually going to get? No, you need to siphon again because I'm not getting anything anymore. Oh, no more? Yeah. How about now? Oh, uh, you might need to just keep going. time so we get that full top that we were talking about. That's it. No, one more. One more? Yeah, it's receiving back. Okay. Oof. Yeah, saw that coming. We are bound to make a mess and that's okay. Yeah, this is this is not a clean process. 
Oh, are you okay? Yeah. Do you want to take this one? Yep. Switch on over. Full bottle. Ready? Yep. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a. Or you just have to keep pumpkin. Pumpkin. Or you just have to keep pumping. Doing my best. Yeah, this, uh, as has been mentioned before, this siphon sucks so bad. Uh, I don't know if we just got like a weird one or, or what's the deal with that, but... Or if we're doing something wrong. Yeah, always a possibility. Oh, it's frozen. Because gravity is actually supposed to be taking over and helping this siphon up and out. But it is not. Yeah, they make it look so easy in the videos, guys. They make it look so easy in the videos. In the video, all they did was tap it a couple times and it started to automatically siphon out the liquid. Either I don't understand physics or we just got a bum deal. If you know the answer, please leave it in the comments. Alright guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put these fizz drops in to carbonate the beer. I wonder if we should just wait and do this like right before we bottle it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we've got our five beers. We are going to fizz drop one at a time. We're going to put the fizz drop in and we're going to go ahead and crimp with the top of our bottle cap crimper. And you'll see that here in a second. But first we're going to eat one of these. You want to eat one? They did it in the video, so now I also have to do it. Let me move this out of the way. This is true. They gave us uh, 12 bottles of beer and about 20 of these, so... So, just so you can get a visual. One less beer than we expected. And that's all inedible. Hey guys, so we were going to show us crimping all the bottles, but unfortunately our camera battery died and we didn't know it. Uh, anyway, we got it done. It was an easier process than probably this whole thing combined to me. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't take as much force as it looks like it takes. Um, we got five bottles of beer out of this. Uh, this was our fifth bottle, and it's we, we put a little skull and crossbones on it because uh, it was a little cloudy. So th this this may not be a good beer. I'll drink it anyway. But yes, he, he is going to uh, give it a try. And maybe we'll even crack this one open on camera so we can see what the, the yeah. difference is. Sure. <laughs> so during the bottle capping process, it's pretty straightforward. I even tested it before we start doing it. It only goes out about 90 degrees. So when you actually go to put a bottle cap on the top, the magnetic part of the bottle capper will actually hold it while you crimp. And so you only crimp to the 90 degrees and stop. You didn't have to go any further than that. Yeah, but uh, we will be back in uh, two weeks for the uh, the opening and the tasting, so you guys can see if this uh, turned out well or was an absolute disaster after all. Absolutely. Hey guys, so it is two weeks later. Uh, we just put these beers in the fridge this morning, and we are finally getting ready to uh, see if all of our hard work paid off. Yep, and part of it is. During the week they advised, you know, crack one open, see if it fizzes a little bit so it got that carbonation. Uh, the yeast that remains floating around is supposed to help carbonate as well as ferment the alcohol. So 
Uh, after putting in those fizz drops, it should at least be a little carbonated by now, so we're about to find out. I guess we're going to buff these bad boys open and first check to see if they actually carbonated. I'm getting ready to open one of the original beers that we bottled. He's opening the one with the skull and crossbones, which was the last beer that we bought, bottled that probably has more sediment. So uh, let's, let's give this a go. By the way, uh, don't take my opinion on how it tastes worth anything because I don't... Oh, listen to that. Because I don't usually drink uh, IPAs. Uh, anyway, mine actually uh, did the fizz. I don't know if you guys could hear it or not, but uh, it appears that the carbonation worked, which is a good first step. Yep, and I also uh, forgot to mention as well, with the sediment, they make a good point. Oh, yours is even better than mine. That... Ooh, here comes oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's okay, though. I'm just going to go ahead and pour mine out now. There's going to be a lot of hit. Do you want me to go get a towel? Yeah. So, as I was saying, they make a good point to pour these into a glass because of what sediment might actually be inside. You know, I don't see any, if I'm being completely honest. This one we expected there to be a lot of leftover, you know, yeast and whatever else sunk to the bottom of that gallon. But it actually looks pretty clear. A little bit, but not too bad. But how would you say it smells? It definitely. It smells exactly like a pretty dark IPA, if I had to say. Like yeah. a real strong. Yeah, now this is a very dark colored beer compared to what I'm used to seeing in IPAs. Again, I'm not the expert on this, he is. It doesn't smell as strong as a lot of the IPAs I've smelled. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do mine now. Pour it correctly. Yeah, this is this is the uh, bartender pour. Yeah, I uh, couldn't exactly help that. Um, I'm also not seeing any sediment in mine, but again, this was one of the the very first ones we did, so the good there, there there shouldn't be sediment in this. Yep. All right, so uh, cheers. Cheers. Very, very, very strong hoppy IPA taste to me. What do yeah. you think? It definitely does have that IPA hoppiness to it. Now, we ended up with a lot less water, so here this, the flavor is a lot stronger too. So that malt sugar that you saw is pouring really slowly, that, that's kind of a pretty concentrated flavor right now. What do you think? I cannot taste that at all. I really just taste the hops. But yeah, I mean, all in all, it tastes exactly like a beer, and I'm just satisfied that it tastes like a beer. <laughs> yeah, for a first attempt, uh, I mean, I think it went okay for a first attempt. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, guys, that is uh, the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching a very realistic approach to uh, first time brewing. Uh, we are going to be brewing again, but I don't know if we're going to be recording it. That, that is uh, yet to be seen. But uh, anyway guys, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks guys.